There are quite a few ways to solve a question like this, and I'm going to show you just a, a couple of them. And the one I want to start off with is based on the title of the video, and that's plugging in. And plugging in is a strategy that works on particular algebra questions, and you know it's a good strategy to try when the answer choices contain variables. So in this case, we have t in the answer choices. So that's a good sign that plugging in might be worth it. So what we're going to do in the question is plug in our own value for t, answer the question based on that value, and then see which choice matches. So a truck enters a stretch of road that drops 4 meters in elevation for every 100 meters along the length of the road. So essentially, starting here, we have a road that's going to drop 4 meters in elevation for every 100 meters along the road. So if I were to draw this kind of triangle, it's essentially what the situation is here. Because this is going to be 100 feet along the road, and as I drive 100 feet along the road, I'm going to drop 4 meters in elevation. Uh, the road is at 1,300 meters elevation where the truck entered, and the truck is traveling at 16 meters per second along the road. So the actual picture we're going to be looking at here is we're at 1,300 meters in elevation, and again, we're going to be in a decline, and our little truck, which I'll draw a really bad picture of, is traveling this way at 16 meters per second. What is the elevation of the road in meters at the point where the truck passes t seconds after entering the road? So we want to know at what elevation, it's not going to be 1300, but at what elevation are we going to be after t seconds in this, in this scenario? And notice all of our choices are 1300 minus some quantity. And that makes sense because our elevation should be declining or decreasing as we go along this road. So a couple ways to handle this. Again, let's try plugging in. So we want to know how much will this be decreased after t seconds. So you can plug in any number here, but especially because we don't have a calculator, it's going to be easier to plug in some numbers rather than others. And right away, since I see that this is going to drop 100 meters, or it's going to drop 4 meters every 100 meters I travel, I'm probably going to want to make t just something like 100. Because the key equation that we're going to need in any case is the distance traveled is the rate times the time. So in this case, it's going to be 16 times the time because the rate is 16 meters per second. So why I pick t is 100 is I get 1600 for the distance traveled along the road. And since it's a, every, for every 100 meters it drops 4, 100 goes nicely into 1600. Again, you could have picked anything. It just makes the math easier. So if I am traveling 1,600 meters along the road, if I'm dropping 4 meters for every 100, notice if I divide 1,600 by 100, I get 16. Times that by 4, and I'm going to get 64 meters of drop, right? Because I'm going to have 16 hundreds in the distance, and for each of those hundreds, it's going to be 4 meters of drop. So I'm going to drop 64 meters, so my answer should be 1300 minus 64, which is 1236. So this should be my answer, and now I go to the choices. So plug in 100 for t. This is going to be 1300 minus 4. Doesn't work. This is 1300 minus 64, which is exactly what we want. That looks good. 1300 minus 400, too big. 1300 minus 1600, that's negative. So our answer here is B. So that's plugging in. Maybe you like that method. That's just one way to do it. What's another one? Well, another one is to use the proportion that you might have in thought we could set up here, right? So if for every 100 meters of distance, we drop 4 meters in elevation, we want to know how much do we drop traveling 16 miles per hour for t seconds. Now, we've already determined earlier that the distance traveled is going to be 16t. So up top here, I'm going to put 16t because that's going to be the distance I've traveled along the road. And then x is going to be the drop of elevation. So let's solve this for x. So we're going to get x equals, or 100x equals, cross multiplying, 64t. So x is equal to 64t divided by 100 which is the same thing as 0.64t. So this is how much I'm dropping traveling for t seconds. So if I'm starting out at 1300, I'm just going to subtract this 0.64t. And as you see, that's also choice B. So that's another way to do it.
To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.